We don't hear much about female Nazis during the time of the Holocaust, but they did exist, and Ilse Koch was unquestionably one of the worst. At Buchenwald, Koch served as a guard, torturing, killing, mutilating, and continuously jeering the prisoners. She was jokingly referred to as the Beast of Buchenwald for her savagery, and her commandant husband was just as cruel. Even people with strong stomachs can tremble when they hear about some of the crimes Koch did. Everyone can rest easy knowing that she was not only held accountable for her immoral conduct but also punished. Some could contend it's not strong enough. After reading about the horrific acts that Buchenwald concentration camp guard Ilse Koch committed, you may come to the conclusion that she was among the most vile people to ever live. Remember that some of the content you read here is graphic and upsetting, therefore, this is not for the weak of heart. But what actually happens to captives at the hands of the beast of Buchenwald is widely documented and real. Before we begin, please like and subscribe. Well, let's go. Ilse Koch married a man as evil as herself. She worked as a bookkeeping clerk in the 1930s before she joined the Nazi party. It was in her time working for the Nazis that she met a man named Karl Otto Koch. Karl Otto was a sadistic sort of man who quickly rose through the ranks to become a commander, serving at several concentration camps. Ilse, rather than be horrified by the atrocities and crimes her husband was committing, instead involved herself in his work, supporting his actions. In 1936, the pair were married, and less than a year later, Karl Otto was made commandant of the Buchenwald concentration camp. This was one of the larger camps, focused on not only imprisoning, but also exterminating Jews, homosexuals, and other victims. Secondly, she gathered inked skin. Ilse's special form of sadism involved scouring prisons for inmates with tattoos. According to other versions, the doctor at the camp asked her to conduct study on the associations between tattoos and criminal behavior in order for him to write a dissertation on the subject. Some claimed she did it for her own amusement. When Koch spotted a distinctive tattoo she liked while galloping through the camp, she would have the prisoner seized. The prisoner was then slain and burned after having his or her skin removed, protecting the tattoos. Not all of the skins were given to the scientists by Ilsa. She kept numerous patches in her house as depressing mementos. Thirdly, she displayed human organs in her home. Although human skin may have been a preferred source of amusement, Ilsa didn't stop there when it came to body parts. Maybe because of her close relationships to the doctors and guards of the camp, she began collecting human body parts and organs. She experimented with making shrunken heads and also collected preserved organs. Lungs, brains, hearts, livers, and more, were all preserved and used as decorations in her home and in the homes of other guards. Some had previously been experimented on, but most were taken solely for decoration. Because these organs were so well preserved, many were recovered and used as evidence in future trials. Fourthly, she shared beds with numerous people. During the concentration camp, it's bad enough that Ilsa had a horrible reputation at the camp for being a witch, but she also had a bad reputation for being an nymphomaniac. According to rumors, Ilsa was sort of in an open marriage. She had multiple children who may have been fathered by various men while also having physicians and security guards as lovers, all without her husband objecting. It appears that her spouse was not only cool with this, but also rather open to sex. They allegedly held orgies for the SS officials and guards at their residence, which had a view of the concentration camp. It was implied that Ilse's spouse was homosexual, or, at the very least, had sex with both women. Fifth, she used money stolen from prisoners to build a sports arena. Many of Ilse's atrocities are truly depraved, but one of her most brazen ones involved fraudulent dealings with money. Koch was very fond of horses and wanted a new place where she could ride them and hold other sporting events. She reasoned that the prisoners of the concentration camp had no need of their money anymore. So, right away, 
she stole the money collected from the inmates and used the funds to build herself a private stadium in which to ride. The amount of money she stole is impressive. In the end, she spent $62,500 of prisoner money, which is about a million dollars by today's standards. Sixth, she forced prisoners to do harmful and sexual things to each other. Whenever the fancy took her, Ilsa enjoyed making the prisoners hurt one another. If she could not find a tattoo she particularly liked, she would sometimes make one of the prisoners tattoo another in a manner that pleased her. The tattooed prisoner would then be killed for their newly inked skin. However, one of her other interests involved sexually taunting and torturing the inmates. She would go out of her way to wear very short skirts, very tight sweaters, and would behave sexually openly around starved and tortured male prisoners. She'd watch as they performed exhausting activities, or flaunt and prance around like a movie star. She would even, for her own amusement, force them to perform sexual acts on each other. This is one of the reasons the inmates began calling her the witch, sometimes bitch, of Buchenwald. Lastly, she killed potential witnesses and hid evidence of her crimes. Amazingly, Ilsa was not convicted of her crimes at the SS trial. There weren't enough witnesses to convict her and all the physical evidence seemed to have vanished. This was likely done with the help of doctors at the camp. According to a Buchenwald report, Koch ordered the execution of a hospital orderly and his assistant. The two medical professionals had treated Carl Otto Koch for syphilis and knew what was going on at the camp. They were killed so as not to reveal secrets. Allegedly Ilsa also killed and incinerated prisoners who had witnessed the criminal things she had done. This method of disposing of evidence proved effective and she was released, to the horror of many. Unfortunately for Ilsa, Germany was not destined to win the war. <laughs>